What's up, it's Nez, and welcome back to Pyre, everyone! Last episode, we finally let go of one of our own, as Captain Jodariel finally got her freedom and returned back to the Commonwealth. Before we continue our journey and restart the rites, let's go talk to everyone in the Black Wagon. Anyone? Aw, Hedwin. You find Hedwin on his own after Jodariel's liberation. You sense straight away what is on his mind. The two of them were close through much of his life. He looks up at you, but his familiar smile is nowhere to be found. I'm sorry, my friend. I should be in a much, much better mood right now. It's just... I can't believe she's gone. Then he shakes his head. Listen to me. I'm talking like she's... He falls silent again. You can tell he needs some time to himself right now and turn to leave. Wait, hold on. Don't leave me here just yet. First of all, my friend, thank you. I don't like to think of it in quite these terms, but out of all of us, I really hope she'd manage to get out of here. She's been here the longest. Not to mention, I'd probably be dead ten times over by now if not for her. What's more, maybe other than Wolfred himself, I have a feeling she's going to make an impact on this plan of ours, back on the other side. Just the same though, I am going to miss her. You and Hedwin share some memories of Jodariel for a time, though it grows clear to you that he needs some time alone. Thanks again, my friend. I hope that one day all of us can meet again. Jody, she'd be happy on that day, I bet. It's very late now. You part ways after bidding each other a good evening. Edwin! Well, whatever. You have to move on with our journey. Good morning, my boy. The place I noted earlier. Let me illuminate the way. Moonlight Alcove. Wolfred indicates you can await the next cycle of the rites here. Wolfred leads you into a calm and quiet clearing, tucked away inside one of the mountain's hidden folds. All about, you see a variety of strange items and equipment. Did your time. Let's talk to anyone. Hello? Sir Wolfred, sir. You find Volfred seemingly lost in thought, but then he turns to you. Greetings, reader. This wagon and I, we've been many memories together, and I cannot help reliving some of them right now. I suppose some aspects of my past may be of relevance to you, given your role. If there is something that you wish to know, you need but ask. Volfred invites you to inquire about his past. Ask what he did to earn his sentence. Volfred reminds you of someone you heard about long ago in the Commonwealth. Ask why the Nightwings disbanded. The triumvirate of which you are now part of seems to have a storied history. Ask how he knows the lone minstrel. The two of them seem to be old acquaintances. How long have they known each other? Ask to be excused. There is no need to take up more of Wolfred's valuable time right now. Let's ask why the Nightwings disbanded. You express interest in knowing more of how the Nightwings came to be here, and Wolfred's past connection to the group. I have been connected to the Nightwings almost since the beginning of my days in exile. They found me in a manner as I understand quite like how Hedwin and the others found you. Back then, it was a smaller group than we have now. I joined an exile called Erissa and another known as Oralek. Erissa, a former exile of the Nightwings who conducted the rites alongside Wolfred and Oralak. Oralak a former exile who conducted the rites alongside Volfred and Erissa. Once in a while, we let Lil Tizo stand with us as well. He is rather older than he looks. The other triumvirates we stood against, they feared us. Only the Tempers presented any threat to us in any given right. But... There was a terrible accident. Erissa, we lost her. And Orlac, he was my friend, he... He fell from Mount Elodio. We lost him, as well, on the night he was to be free. We were reckless, hasty, and I was powerless to stop any of it. I blamed the rites themselves, the circumstances that put us into danger. The downside has claimed many lives, yet this, it was too much. I vowed never again to don the mask and raiments. I had the black wagon cleared and buried, such that it could not be used again. If the night wings would rise again, it would be under different circumstances, under new leadership, and towards a different purpose. That's all I wish to say of this, my boy. What else do you wish to ask? Let's ask him what he did to earn his sentence. He asked Wolfred about his path in the Commonwealth and how it is he came to be in the downside. How rather forward of you, my boy. Most whom I have met during my travels here have been reluctant to approach the subject of one's history before one's exile. Nonetheless, I am happy to tell you. 
As a reader, I assume you are familiar with the stamping press. I owned and operated one. An illegal invention allowing written materials to be published at an extraordinary rate. I took issue with the Commonwealth, the ban on literacy, the interminable wars against the high-wing remnants. I spread the truth about it all with my machine. Under pseudonym, of course. Still, I knew I was putting myself at risk, and sure enough, my stamping press was eventually discovered and burned to the ground. I, however, managed to elude capture for a while, but not for long enough. Here, in the downside, I chance upon the Nightwings, who are searching for a reader. In that respect, my past, I think, is similar to yours. Anyway, that is the long and short of it. Now then, was there anything else? Ask how he knows Tarek! You ask Volfred about his history with the Lone Minstrel, whom he seems to know quite well. Tarek was there with the Nightwings when they took me on. His manner has always been much as how you've seen. Although he is somewhat more cheerful now than I recall back then, if you believe that, I think our plan has sparked a little fire in him. He serves the rights and the Nightwings. I have tried to ask him of his past before, but he seems rather reluctant to speak of it. Though it is plain that he is not from around here. This being the downside, I respect his wishes for some privacy. Nonetheless, although I do not know too much about him, I count him as a friend. I lost track of him for some time, though it was he who first informed me that the Nightwings had returned. He and Tisa were instrumental in our meeting. It's been good to see him doing relatively well. Anyway, was there anything else you wish to talk about for now? That's it? Let's be excused. You thank Wolfred for his time and bid him a good rest for the afternoon. Likewise to you, reader. Be well. Let's bide our time. Everyone, the amenities are modest here at Moonlight Alcove, but I suggest that you get comfortable. We may be here for some time. As for myself, I have business to attend to. Please leave the wagon in my care for now. It shall be ready by when you need it next. From the mountaintop, you can see all across the downside. It's impossible expanse staring back at you. The thought occurs to you that you may never see another land besides it. And so, you and your companions wait upon the mountaintop in quiet solitude, anticipating when the cycle of the rites begins to turn again. Then you shall have another opportunity to free one of your own. You may earn back their freedom one by one. Many moons pass, then one evening. May I have a moment, reader? The lone minstrel finds you poring over the Book of Rites, as has been your leaning through your stay at this abode. Begging your pardon, but there is something you may wish to see. Please follow me. You follow him into the cold of night. Look forth, reader, sir. The stars shine like you have never seen. Once more, the path toward salvation is revealed, but now something is different. The stars shine once more. Seek our next destination? What is that? Even more stars. Those are all the stars we've been before. Each prior time you searched the stars, they showed to you a single path. But now, several rites avail themselves to you at once. Henceforth, you may choose from several different rites. Choose your path towards salvation. There's Milith, where we'll have to fight the accusers. Hau, where we'll fight the fate next. Gaul, where we'll fight the Pyre Hearts. And that seems to be it for now. The fate seems like a modest group to fight. The stars urge that we go to the Cairn of Haub, a long way off. Wolfred, sir, how are we to reach the Cairn of Haub in due course of time? You know full well, Tarek. Preparations are complete. You think you see the lone minstrel smile ever faintly, but cannot be sure. Please ask the others to gather their belongings, rest, and then assemble at the wagon there at dawn. We shall be departing at that time. As you will, sir. The cycle begins anew. As the years advance, you'll find there ought to be fewer rites this time, until once more we are to traverse Scribesgate. Exactly how many it is difficult to say, but our next chance at liberty ought to present itself much sooner than before. Let's be ready for it. Now then, see you in the morning, reader. Your companions have not traveled far from Moonlight Alcove. Word of the news soon spreads throughout the group. Time to continue our journey and restart the rites. Let's go, everyone! 
Next morning, Volfred calls everyone together before the black wagon. This old wagon is more than it appears. With Bertrude's aid, it escorted you across the sea to me. Now it shall escort us anywhere the stars require. Come and see. Is it gonna begin to fly? Step inside. Whoa. Something has changed about the wagon's interior. What looked before to be old cracks and signs of age now expose various intricate components once hidden from view. You are the Nightwings. You should travel in their customary way. He turns to you, indicating levers and devices marked with symbols from the book. Now, reader, whenever you're ready, you may take us up. I'll show you how. And everyone else, hang on to something. Take off! Up we go! We're flying! After having soared into the sky, the black wagon remains aloft somehow. Never thought I'd soar like this again. Tizo is excited to be flying again. You get the impression this may not be the first time for him. I can't believe it. The night wings sail the skies again, wheresoever the stars may call for them. There is one catch. The downside provides few locales suitable for landing. Though we should be able to find at least a couple landing places near where we're going. We'll then make way by land or sea towards our destination. Now, without further ado, let us proceed. The black wagon can fly. Seek landing near the Cairn of Hope. Sail now, the skies. Oh, okay. The next right, the Cairn of Hope, your destination. The rites will soon commence here if the stars themselves are to be believed. Old shift to boost. The forbidding Cairn of Haub lies below. Not many exiles see fit across beyond it. Some fear that the listless remains of Shaq's six shoulders shall snatch them up if they attempt to cross. Others simply do not want to pass through to flagging hands. Do you know its significance as we do? Although your adversaries the fate should be on their way there now, soon you shall confront them once again. Let's land. We're back in Jamur Valley. You touch down in the heart of Jamur Valley, where you first face the fate and the dissidents. You briefly wonder where they might be now and how they fare. You join your companions for a routine inspection of the wagon following its flight. Zay confirms the wagon's wheels withstood the shifting temperature and still appear to be in reasonable shape. Tizo managed to calm some of the drive imps prone to dizziness or frenzy at high altitudes. Other than that, everything checks out. The rest of your crew got through the flight without complaint. You now have a little time before having to set forth by land. Explore? Okay. The Beyonder Crystal seeks headwind. Hello there, Sir Gilman. You have something on your mind. Sir Gilman is shivering there after the Black Wagon's maiden voyage through the skies. I'm a master reader! This knight is very, very slightly out of sorts is all. He merely appears terrified, but he assures you that his seeming cowardice is but an optical illusion in this case. Tamitha overhears and joins you. Flying's not for everyone, sir knight. This knight heartily concurs, though how anyone at all can stand it he has yet to understand. Well, let's see. What's it like to swim in the waters of the Sea Dominion? Ah, those glorious murky waters, engulfed in hideous warfare to be sure, but otherwise a joy to cut across, to feel the coolness of the waves beneath one's gill slits and the like. Though this knight is now accustomed to his life above the surface. Flying's just the same, sir knight. It resists those who are not born to it. I, in turn, have wondered what your seas are like, but the thought of swimming fills me with disgust. Though I haven't had to swim and you now have to fly, that's very brave of you, and you handled it better than some harp fledglings I've met in my day. You'll get used to it. She departs, but you sense Sir Gilman's feeling better after the exchange. Sir Gilman gained one hope for the next rite. Wish him well. The crystal calls for headwind. A visit from my favorite reader. What's the occasion? Request of her scribe trial. Hmm. Then who exactly do you have in mind? Edwin. You ask Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Edwin. Oh, you must mean that nomad boy. So innocent, that one. I should have a lot of work to do with him. Then let us bring him forth. Soon, Edwin appears in heat of the summons. Hey, my friend. What's going on?
Are you prepared, Hedwin? The apparition Sandra peers and unfastens her mask. Listen well, boy, you answer to me here. Understood. You are a fool, do not talk back to me. Your reliance on your friends is such a burden upon them. Let us see what you can do without their aid, save for that of your lovely reader there. Oh god, we got killed. But we also killed them. Uh oh. Come on, head! Oh god. Yeah, you're not taking that. Oh god. That demon has really long range. One point for Hedwig. Two more points to go. There we go. Oh god. Okay, we got killed. And they got a point. Your aura is so big, Mr. Apparition. He jumped towards me. Edwin, I believe. We keep getting double kills. Oh, he jumped right on me. Both of you are down. Both are out. One more point to go. I did not jump in time. You're not getting that ball from me? Victory! We did it! It seems you did indeed, boy. Your performance was sufficient and you passed my test. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and to your lovely reader. Now farewell. Good to be back after all that. Say, what's that you have there? You received Gaul's Bracer for completing Hedwin's trial. Gaul's Bracer. Amazing! Let's give that to Hedwin. A new trinket for you. Let's explore the shant. No one seems very much inclined to explore the blistering environs here, except for Sei, who is more upbeat even than usual. A sacred bath in the mud cleanses the mind. At least I think it does, but come look, come look. She draws you by the hand toward one of the muddy pits and jumps right in, laughing. At first you are put off, and yet her joy is infectious. Soon you are in better spirits, as is she. You return together to the wagon, where you find yourself with time and motivation to pursue your vocations. Zay gain plus two hope for the next ride. Wish her a pleasant day. Should we forge for resources, study in private, or mentor a companion? The usual. Who should we mentor today? Let's mentor. Pamitha or Sir Gilman? Pamitha. Why certainly, reader darling, how good of you to ask. You ask Pamitha to explain to you in her own words the histories of the eight scribes and speak how their varied backgrounds formed the basis not just for the rights but for the commonwealth. Level up! All in all, having to unlearn everything I've learned is going somewhat faster than expected. Pamitha can use her dash ability in rapid succession and for less stamina. After saluting her adversaries, Pamitha instantly switches places with her nearest ally. Let's choose Shrike Dash. My sisters, we all come from the flock of Triasathesis. Maybe we just don't remember her anymore. Continue on our journey. To the Cairn of Haub. The 
The slug market is here, and we have more pages revealed. Hey, you guys, where's your friend? You know, the big one with the horns, likes frowning, stuff like that. Something happened there or what? Heard a crazy story, she just flew on out of here or something. Anyways. Twilight Shard. When flinging the orb to the adversary's pirate, the bearer deals bonus damage. Let's gain more stardust. And let's improve the moon crest. A near 50% chance to be revived. Excellent. You guys take care, okay? And thanks for doing business. Hey, Say! Say seems to be talking to the Black Wagon's walls again, though this time something seems to have come over her. Little brother, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? You are unsure whether to check in with her or leave her be. Zay is acting rather odd even for her. Wait and listen, get her attention. Your concern for her is such that you had best check in to make sure she is alright. Wait and listen. Say would not be here if she lacked the capacity to work through her problems. Let's listen. You sense now is not the time to interrupt, and that Say is on the verge of confronting some long dormant emotions which she ought to face. They always said that there was something wrong with me, but they wouldn't really tell me what. They wouldn't say. They just... They said that I was moon-touched, but so what? Moon-touched? Those deemed impaired by Commonwealth standards or very different in a negative sense? So then, the scribes, they called me here. They're the ones who brought me here. Not those, those people. They were so cruel. They always were so cruel. I did have a little brother at the time. No one that I recall, really. Although so much of it back then, I can't tell how much of it I dreamt. Most of it, I didn't want it to be true. But I remember that they threw me out. They decided they would throw me out. And let the scribes take care of me, they said. The scribes, they would take care of me. It was so very quiet here, and I was all alone again, although I think I liked it more. Being alone down here than being alone back there. Everybody's alone here, and so it makes me feel less alone somehow. Back there, why, I would sometimes see families, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, but here, there was hardly anyone at all. But I knew that I was closer to the scribes, I knew that they were there in the sky above, and I did search for them there, you know, and then one night I found them. I saw the stars and they were falling to the ground, and I thought, why is it the scribes themselves are crying? Are they sad? And maybe are they sad for me? Well, that was when I first saw you, little brother. With your help, I would get closer to the scribes. That way, maybe they could answer all my questions, don't you think? But I'm so glad I found you and the others. I'm finally not alone. I'm finally not alone, and more importantly, I think, sometimes I even feel that way that I'm not alone. Maybe, as we get closer, maybe, I get to feel that way more often. Being here or being anywhere with you and all my friends. She falls silent. Though you were concerned for her at first, you sense now that she is at peace. She wanders off, paying you no notice in the least. You sense you have a better understanding of her now. Aw, Zay. Now that we've taken care of everything, there's nothing left to do but commence the rites. Let's go, everyone! <laughs> You and the others are busying yourself for the commencement of the rite this evening when you notice Zay is behaving strangely more than usual. Maybe he is here. I mean, I think he has to be, somewhere nearby. She notices you then. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. I was just, I was just, oh, it's just, I think maybe my friend is here. And I was hoping to say hi to him before we have to do the ceremony with the star ball. Wait, is that, that's him, that's him. My friend is here, he's here. Just then, your adversaries of fate arrive on the other side of the Cairn of Haub. They begin making necessary preparations. Zay rushes over to them before anyone can stop her, even as the stars above start shining through the darkness. Reader, ever persevering, aren't we? You know it, disembodied voice. Rejoice, because the cycle of the rites begins anew. Rejoice! Perhaps you'll liberate another soon enough. Oh, we will. Your chosen adversaries here shall be... The Fate! Reduce their flame to ash, just as you did when last you met. Now, who exactly shall oppose them? Oh, hello again, hello! Why, hello indeed, young one! We are the Fate, and once again we hail you and all the Nightwings. Thanks, um, I was wondering, may I speak to your son? Why, I... 
I do not see why not, but let me see here. Almer! Almer, where are you? Begging your pardon, young one, but my son, he is not always punctual, you see. Hold, I shall go and fetch him. Oh, okay. I mean, my friend. I, I hope he remembers me. You? Wait, where's father? Father! Oh, hello! Hello again! Your father, he went looking for you. He... did you not see him? No, I did not see him. This had best not be some Nightwing's trick, or else I'll... Ah, there you are, Almer! Our cordial adversary wishes to salute you, I believe. Oh, that's right. I mean, here, this is my salute. I'm saluting you. It's nice to see you, and may the scribes watch over you, okay? I want them to watch over us as well, but maybe just this time, or not just this time, but this and other times, maybe, they can watch over all of us, okay? The two of them stand and watch as Zay skips over to rejoin your group. An unusual sort, that one. She is. She is about your age. Father. Ah, is a ship forming? Oh well. I pray that all our training since our last encounter shall not be in vain. You sense Dalbert speaks the truth. The fate are more capable than before. Each time you face a triumvirate, they gain talismans and masteries. Do not underestimate them. Now, let us begin. Let's see what they have. Dying Flame. While the Bearer's Pyre has less points, Bear deals bonus damage. While the Bearer's Pyre has less flame, the Bear deals more damage. Okay, so they're all holding Dying Flame. Cloud Jump. Dalbert can jump a second time while airborne. Lightning Run. Can run faster than usual. Titan Reflex. The brief charge time before Almer jumps or sprints is virtually eliminated. Enya gains 50% more stamina, letting her jump and sprint more often. Okay. So they're a jumping team. We need people that can shoot them out of the sky. Or at least slash them really fast. So we'll need Rookie for this. Rookie. Sir Gilman, would you like to come along? Sir Gilman. Then we bring in Zay. Zay! Terastia? Very well. The scribes, I hope they're watching, all of us. Steal yourself, Almer! Are you prepared to face our adversaries once again? Father. Always, father. Let us prevail here and now. Let us do so indeed, my son! The high priority target here is Almer, we can't let him have the ball. Jump, rookie! There we go. So we've now given them bonus damage. As long as they don't hit us, we'll be fine. Dalbert vanished. Dalbert's gone. Barely. Zay is incredibly fast aura casting now. Excellent. Run, Rookie! There we go. A few more points left. What are you doing, you? Put your mask back on. We are in the middle of a right. Oh, I know. It's just I wanted to say, I think you are very brave is all, I think. Because we have encountered many triumvirates by now. I mean, we have the dissidents, the tempers, and... What are you talking about? Get to the point. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... I just... My name is Zay. I wanted you to know my name. It's Zay, since I know yours. I see then. Ready yourself, Zay. We shall not hold back. Such a struggle it must be for poor Dalbert. Oh god, that was fast. Oh no! Sir Gilman! Jump! Nice catch! Oh no, Zay got hit. Take that. They jumped in! With grace. One more point to go, everyone. Nice jump, Zay. Victory for the Nightwings! The Nightwings prevail yet again! It's 
was as though the scribes themselves stood by their side. The right is complete. Um, wait, I, I wanted, I'm sorry, I just wanted to apologize, I think. Why, young one, you must not say such things. You are one of the Nightwings, the most envied of all triumvirates. We aspire to your greatness and your legacy. Father, please, no more of this. They have prevailed. We need not grovel at their feet. Um, Almer, is it? Almer? I just had a question. Ask quickly and then go about your business. Oh, I just, um... Would you be my friend? What? I was wondering if you would be my friend, because I don't, well, I don't have a lot of friends, and you are brave and gentle with your father, so... <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. I shall see you in a little while, my son. Uh, what? I... The scribes, were they not friends? I think I choose to think they brought us here, to be closer together, not to be apart. Oh, a new ship has formed. Good job, everyone. Proud of you all. I didn't really get to use Sir Gilman much, and I'm still not used to him. You return to the wagon after you and your fellow exiles secured victory over the fate, and find Volfin waiting for you there. Well done back there, my boy. You are serving your companions well. Now then, I have something that I wish to share with you, if you have a moment. We have discussed the plan of which we are all a part. I have a means of measuring our progress towards the goal of it. I'd like for you to have a first look at it. First, let's determine where the rights may take us next. It's not a dust day. Look forth. I expect you shall again see several shining stars where once you saw but one. You gaze again into the darkness of the night. Describe stars beckon. Triesta? Gaul? Several shining stars, a trick of the eye, or the will of the scribes, who can say? I too once gained this newfound vision many years ago, following my first liberation rite, and I believe only we of the Nightwings have this gift. I realize that in choosing whom the Nightwings confront in each rite, we in turn influence which triumvirate we face when the time comes for someone to be set free. The object I invite you to use contains further detail. Henceforth, you may use Volfin's planner to see your current progress. Look upon it now. Ooh. Using Volfin's planner, you may assess your progress towards your ultimate goal, as well as check the current standings of your adversaries. Volfin shall keep this information up to date for the remainder of your quest. You may look over it now or any time in the Black Wagon or while searching the stars. We're at the top, with nine victories and zero defeats. Amazing. Right still next liberation? Question mark. Liberation rights conducted one. Additional rights required one. Interesting. We'll check on that later. So let's choose who will fight next. Elith with the dissidents. Gaul, the pyre hearts. Or Triesta with the accusers. Let's go to Triesta. So we're on to take on Lendl and the Accusers this time, huh? I've done some digging about him. He then tells you what he knows of your next adversary. Lendl the Liar, the first adversary you confronted in the rites not so long after you took your first steps on the path to freedom. A former constable of the Commonwealth, he gained a reputation for his strict and brutal manner. By any means, he always caught the crook. Once he arrested a civilian who hated him, on suspicion of theft of Commonwealth artifacts that had gone missing. Lendl discovered the artifacts himself in the civilian's home. The suspect soon was exiled, still he denied the charges, even as they cast him downriver. The case was investigated further, though too late. Suspicions turned to Lendl, it turned out he planted the damning evidence himself, so he was exiled in turn. In the downside, he soon became acquainted with the rights, having heard of all of this from several people in high places. He asserted himself as the de facto leader of the accusers. They bent to his aggressive nature and prevailed many times under his watch. Yet each time his chance at liberty arose, the Nightwings either defeated him or simply did not show. I guess that's why he doesn't care for us. No matter though, we'll soon give him more reason. See you in the morning, my friend. You bid Hedwin a good evening. At dawn, you shall take flight again. And that was this episode of Pyre, everyone. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe so we could grow our channel together. 
The journey's only just begun for the Nightwings. Once again, my name is Zez, and thanks for watching. Bye, everyone!